Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? What a lovely morning. Better. Shut up. Better life for photography today. We've got somebody tied up in the boot. They're making a noise. So, <coughs> yeah, lovely uh, low white cloud today and uh, busy day. Oh, just jumped out the shower. Busy, busy day today. There's me complaining all yesterday, wasn't I, about having no patience. And now today, I think we've got the busiest day we've ever had. But then, you see, no patience again Thursday. So some patience Wednesday, some patience Friday. I think we're booked up Friday morning. But uh, Thursday I'm babysitting, so don't expect no video from Thursday. So why are we suddenly so busy? Well, we've got a hygienist. The hygienist comes in today. And lots and lots of patients like to see the hygienist. The hygienist services, routine hygienist services, is one of the things that everybody really, really wants. And uh, they get upset if they don't get it. And they get upset even if they don't need it and they don't get it, they get upset. And that is, that can be a problem. Because, uh, you know, we've had a falling out with a few patients who especially if they're paying on the monthly plan and they believe that they should be seeing the hygienist and they don't need to see the hygienist and therefore we don't refer them and then they get upset. But then if we do refer them, I get upset because I'm the hygienist is not free to me. And, you know, everyone pays monthly according to uh, their likelihood of needing treatment. And so if they suddenly insist on having treatment that they don't need, then their likelihood of needing treatment goes up, therefore they may be miscategorised. Most typically we may have them in a band B when they, you know, they really... From a financial point of view, they need to be in a band C. Well, the scheme doesn't really allow much um, leeway in terms of bending the bands, you know, they don't like it. They don't... They, they have a scheme to run. Certainly a uh, DEM plan which takes the the whole national sort of standardisation uh, much more seriously than perhaps the, 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 the later plans do. Um, you know, I mean, like DPAS, for example, is less affected if you cock up the, the dental plan because their name really isn't on it. It's your dental plan. Your, your, it's your brand that's at stake, you know. So if you abuse it, then to a certain extent, they're one step removed, aren't they, from the fallout. Dem plan is not very. You're very definitely offering dem plan if you're a dem plan dentist, and so any abuse of the scheme and dem plan really has to come in and, and say whether you administered it properly or not. Now, I'm not saying there's not some discretion around the edges. I mean, if somebody is a B and you know you think that they are, let's say they're a borderline BC, then you have got the. Uh, ability to put them in C. In fact, nobody would check or, or pick it up even if you did. The categorization is left entirely to the dentist and so no one really is going to pick up the fact that uh, you've, you've uh, you know, the patient's, let's say the cutoff is 90 points, supposing the patient's 89. Uh, and what you, instead of putting them in the B89, you put them in the C90-91 category. No one's going to know, but uh, um, you know, if you started routinely putting everybody in D&E uh, because you felt that that was, you know, from a financial point of view, that's the only way you're going to make enough of a profit of these patients, then, um, then the problem is that you're misapplying the scheme because what you should do is you should have like a bell-shaped distribution of patients. In fact, uh, there's far, far more uh, people in B than there are in D and a lot more people in A than there are in E. So in fact, it's not a uniformly symmetrical bell-shaped curve, but it's, you know, the point is it, there is a distribution of patients into these categories. And I think if your uh, patients are not, you know, don't fall into the sort of the mostly in C and then a few more in D and B and then the rest in A and one in E type uh, distribution, then you're not, applying the scheme right. I don't know whether DPAS will pick you up on that, but your patients are not going to be so uh, skewed towards the higher end, unless you literally were going to put all of your high-risk patients in, in a capitation plan and, and treat all of your low-risk patients on a pay-as-you-go basis, which will be 
with the absolute reverse of how you want to do it, you know? I mean, you'd want to put all your high-risk patients on pay-as-you-go and the lower-risk patients on a, on a decapitation plan. So, and that's not because, you know, you want to charge people for money, money for work that they're not having done. It's just that your expenses are fixed. This is the whole point of the plan. Your expenses are fixed and so what you do is you ask the patient to make like a fixed monthly contribution towards the cost of running the practice. And everyone gets a fair shake because if they pay less, they're likely to need less and if they pay more, they're likely to need more. So, uh, categorising patients in the capitation plan correctly is, uh, is really the only, <coughs> is the key thing that you need to get right and it's usually the only thing that the dentists get wrong. Um, what they do is they tend to sort of uh, put them in uh, one, one category up just for luck, you know, and you shouldn't do that at all. You know? And if a patient's oral health uh, in, uh, improves, uh, you should put them down a category. And if they're, you know, providing that they're on the borderline and the, the amount of points for the gum health is sufficient to put them across the border, then fair enough. And that's actually fairly rare, um, <clears throat> that a patient will be right on the border and it will depend entirely on whether they brush their teeth as to which category they go in. Um, what's far more likely is that you'll have someone who's a C who will demonstrate over a period of time, probably years, that uh, um, <coughs> they, they have got like a, a flagrant disregard for their oral health in that they are repeatedly refused to uh, turn themselves into a plaque-free zone and uh, quite happy to admit that they, are, they still like cakes and biscuits. In which case they're not they're not really upholding their end of the bargain, you know. I mean, the, the whole point about capitation is not that it's not that it's not a page, it's not like just another way of paying for your dentistry, right? It's not like oh well, it's not HP for fillings. It's um, it's a system that rewards both parties for keeping the mouth for 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 the for the mouth being healthy. If the mouth is healthy. And uh, the patient may say, well, okay, you know, <clears throat> from what I can work out, the point of the scheme is that I offload the risk. The risk of anything going wrong um, <clears throat> is offloaded onto the practice, and that's true. Uh, in fact, more technically, the risk of the, the cost of having to repair anything that goes wrong is offloaded onto the practice. The patient still keeps the tooth that's gone wrong, so... <laughs> So it's like, uh, you know, there's that slight nuance there, isn't there, in that, you know, it's not up to the dentist to come round to your house and brush your teeth or, or, or keep you away from sugar, you know, I mean, that's the quid pro quo. When you go on the scheme, you state your desire to have a healthy mouth, uh, low, low periodontal uh, disease and low decay rate. So, and your, the part that you play in that is to brush thoroughly uh, use disclosing tablets brush thoroughly at least once a day and so far as possible cut out sugar from your diet which does mean cakes biscuits sweets custard you name it you know um, <clears throat> and if a patient isn't holding up on their end of that then uh, they're not suitable to be on a plan because the plan involves some certainty over the risk and if a patient is acting in a sort of a blasé or sort of laissez-faire way in terms of damaging their teeth, then they become an unquantifiable risk, or certainly a much higher risk than uh, than you anticipated, and therefore they shouldn't be in the in the plan. You can, and I have done this occasionally. I haven't done this in the last two years, but you can bump people up. Um, it's easier actually if you've told them when they go on the plan that they are a borderline case, but you'll put them on the lower band, providing everything's fine. Um, and then, um, and then if if they really aren't caring for their mouths, then uh, it should come as no surprise to them when you just tell them that they've got two options: one is to go back onto a pay-as-you-go basis, or, or uh, the other one is to. Uh, just bump up a, a grade and sometimes they prefer to do that and sometimes they just prefer to come off. Um, <clears throat> the biggest problem is what to do with the patients who just don't come in. Um, 
you know, so supposing you've got someone on a B or a C grade and and you start to realise that you haven't seen them for over a year or something, or, or nearly two years or something. And they're, um, you know, your, <laughs> let's say that they come in and they need a tonne of work, um, and you'd be quite within your rights to say that, uh, you know, this work is more extensive, more difficult, more time consuming and more costly because you didn't come in um, and uh, let us uh, <clears throat> do regular inspections of your mouth at which you know which we would have picked this up earlier and therefore could have done it more easily more cheaply more quickly but of course the patients don't like that because what they they immediately say well I've been coming here for you know I've paid you like two years premiums of 20 quid a month which is uh, I know it's F all isn't it really I mean it's about 500 quid but um, <clears throat> Your, you know, they, they, they expect to have a full mouth reconstruction for that 500 quid because it's in the rules, you know. But the, the rules do cover that. I mean, the rules you can turn around and say, look, I'm sorry. Part of the deal is that you come in for regular inspections. You know? And then they'll say, like, well, you didn't recall me, you know. They start getting a bit desperate at that point. So, which point you can say, yeah, yeah, we did recall you. So, and it's certainly a good idea, I think, if you've got lots of people on the plan. Once a year, just have a little trawl and a letter. And uh, If you've got a computerised system, you can do this quite easily and say, um, look, you, uh, you're on the plan and we haven't seen you for a year. And that part of the terms of the plan is that you allow us to keep on top of everything, keep it while it's simple. So please come in straight away so that we can just check that everything's okay. <coughs> or it may cause problems in the future. But that's a brilliant, that's a brilliant trait, or may cause problems in the future. Do this or it may cause problems in the future, okay? Because, and you can use it for uh, that sort of, you know, come in and have a checkup, or it may cause problems in the future, I, you, you may get slung off the plan. Or you may get put up a category. Or, um, you know, if somebody um, misses an appointment, but you don't quite know why, send them a letter saying, you know, we noticed that you didn't turn up for your appointment, please get in touch. Um, because if you don't, it may cause problems in the, with, in the future with booking. In other words, you may be denied booking. So, busy day, busy day. I've, um, we have a staff WhatsApp group and uh, it's fantastic. I mean, there's only four of us on it, but the point is that there are some things that it's used mainly for, um, obviously for interest staff communications, which tend to be mostly about practice admin, uh, such as, you know, everyone telling everyone what time we're starting the next day or, um, it's also used for social events, such as one of the staff recently ran a marathon, and so we kept in touch with her on the, you know, her preparations and congratulated her and everything on the staff WhatsApp group. So um, <clears throat> what I did was eight o'clock. I called uh, called an impromptu staff briefing at eight fifty. Um, now that that's not going to be a massive shock to anyone because they'll all be at work then. But what I'm doing is I'm telling them to sort of clear the decks and get ready just to, to have a huddle at 8.50 so we can plan today. Um, what we've done is we've had a, quite a large number of inquiries from people. One of the local NHS practices has shut down and so we're getting probably three phone calls a day from patients asking if we're taking on new patients. Um, we are we're a private practice and so I first of all I have to say to them straight away are you looking are you looking for an NHS dentist or a private one and if they say NHS then um, what, what I have done in the past is um, send them a list of um, local NHS practices well I say list there's only one so uh, <clears throat> I might uh, I might contact the commissioning authority and ask them what they're what they're doing, what their plans are, you know, to do with all these patients that are ringing around. Because uh, I just I'm quite happy to help them disseminate information about uh, what these patients should do. Um, you know, 
know, and I feel sorry for them. They are, at the moment, where I am in the East Kent area. If you want to get taken on to an NHS practice, we are now, just bear, bearing in mind, we are now in April, towards the end of April 2018, and the earliest you can get accepted at an NHS practice around here is February 2019. So that's, you know, I don't know how that's providing for people's dental care. I honestly don't know how that's, you know, the commissioning authority can, can be satisfied at all with that arrangement. And I might need to uh, have a ring, of, a ring of them up, you know, and ask them what, the, what is the plan. Right. So, what was I going to say? There's one other aspect of today being the busiest day that I was going to cover. And I completely, I've completely, completely lost it. If it comes back to me, I'll come back. So, cut, cut, cut. Action. No, it's completely gone. I've completely forgotten it. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember it. I've tried to try and remember it. I've tried not remembering it. It's not working. <clears throat> I'm sure it's not important. Here I am at work at 7.36. That's odd. That was a member of the staff leaving. Goodness knows what she's doing leaving. Actually, it's not 7.36. It's 8.36. So I've... Um, I haven't put the clock forward in my car yet. Yesterday went okay. Had a meeting with my redundant member of staff to do the financial handover. That was okay, that worked well. Well, I'm going to have a busy day. I hope you are as well. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. If I remember that thing, I'll tell you tomorrow. All right. Okay, bye.